Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to this Red Cloud Photography video tutorial. In this episode, we'll be looking at white balance and ISO and exploring how both of these can really enhance your photography. Talking about white balance, what we have to think about is the fact that light is not white. So if we think about a sodium street light, as in this picture here, what we get is an orange light coming off the street light. Whereas if we look at the light coming out of a fluorescent tube, we see that the light has a greeny blue tinge to it, as we see in this picture here. So light has different colour casts or temperatures, and we measure these in photography in a unit called Kelvin. So on our camera, we have auto white balance settings, but this isn't always right. So it's best to know how to actually change the settings for yourself to allow you to achieve the right conditions for the shot and the light source that you're taking the photograph in. My camera has a convenient white balance setting button on the top. You may have to scroll through the menus on your camera to be able to change the white balance. When I press the button, I'm given a range of options on the back there. I'm currently set to auto white balance. Uh, I can move it to, for example, sunshine, which I would use on a really, really strong sunny day, or shade or cloud, which is obviously much more typical to our normal British conditions. Tungsten light, which I would use indoors, where we've got a tungsten light source, or a fluorescent light source, which is, say, a kitchen light or something like that. Flash, or the ability to set my own custom setting for white balance. So in this first image of some brickwork, which was taken indoors with a white balance set to fluorescent, because I was under fluorescent tubes, the image is represented with a slightly blue-green tinge, but that's how I saw it. In this next image, again taken indoors, I changed the white balance to sunlight. And as the camera was expecting sunlit conditions, there is a much more unnatural orangey cast to the picture. Conversely, when I've gone outside to take this image, again with a sunlight setting for my white balance, this is a proper accurate representation of how the brickwork looked in the sunlight outside. Slightly red, but actually what I saw. Now, in this image, I've changed the white balance setting to fluorescent, and once again, we've got that sort of bluey green colour cast appearing on the brickwork. But this isn't what I saw. This is not the correct representation of the image. You can use white balance settings to play around with the image settings and to change the representation of what you see, but usually what we want to try and get is an accurate representation of what our eyes are seeing at the time we take the picture. As we can see in these two pictures of a church, taken using different white balance settings, the first one on the left is taken with an auto white balance and really has a sort of steely grey look to it, it just doesn't look right. On the next picture, I actually changed the white balance to be shade and gave it a much more realistic red look because the sun was setting on the brickwork of the church. This is how I saw the frame. So if we want to take really great photos, we need to consider the exposure. And when we talk about exposure, what we mean is the amount of light entering the camera through the lens and onto the sensor. There are three key factors that control the exposure of a photograph. The aperture size, the shutter speed and the ISO setting. We've got some great tutorials that talk about aperture size and shutter speed and in this one we'll talk about the ISO setting. ISO itself stands for International Standards Organisation but that really isn't important, you don't need to remember that. What you do need to remember is that ISO is a series of numbers that actually control how sensitive your camera is to light. So the ISO button on my camera is on the top of the camera just here. So I press the ISO button and that brings up on the display at the back all the different settings. And then as I use the dial I can scroll through. This camera's great, it's got a whole range of settings and intermediate settings, but the full ISO values are 100, 200, doubles to 400, doubles to 800, doubles to 1600, etc. Each change of ISO from 100 to 200 represents a doubling in the sensitivity of the sensor to light. Similarly, if you drop from 800 to 400, that halves the sensitivity of the sensor. So, if we can't achieve the correct exposure by using the aperture setting 
or by using the shutter speed, what we can do is use the ISO. However, using ISO to control exposure does come with consequences. As we go up the ISO scale, the pixels that we use on the sensor actually become larger. This results in the image becoming what we term grainier, where it has more noise in it, it becomes less sharp. Now traditionally, we don't really want grain in our pictures. It's something we want to try and avoid. So it is best to try and use the lowest possible ISO in combination with the other two factors, the shutter speed and the aperture size, to try and achieve the best image we can. So at ISO 100, the actual pixel size are really small and the grain is almost non-existent. We can't see it with our eye. However, once we've gone up to ISO 1600, the grain becomes very apparent because those pixels are so much larger. So let's have a look at a practical example of how ISO affects the final image. One good way to demonstrate the effect of ISO and noise is to use a grey card. We're taking these two pictures of a plain grey card. You can see the one on the left, which uses ISO 100, is really quite smooth and quite clear and there's no noise, as we term it, or grain, in the detail of the picture. Whereas the image on the right, taken using an ISO of 3200, is a much busier, noisier, messy image because the pixel size is that much greater and that means we've lost that much detail. So that completes Red Cloud Photography's video tutorial looking at ISO and white balance. I hope you found it really useful and it's helped your photography. Please have a look at our website for further information, more tutorials and some great courses. Hope to see you on one soon. Cheers. Thank you.